Welcome to the Stacked Supplement Podcast, the premier source for supplement news and reviews. We are back with another episode of the Stacked Supplement Podcast, and we have one of the specialist guests I've ever had on this, uh, this show, a longtime friend, and, 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 and I mean longtime friend, uh, one of the, 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 the leaders, the thinkers, one of the leaders and thinkers behind the uh, incredibly popular and now available pretty much everywhere, Bray's energy drink it is uh, none other than Lex Kovacs. You, uh, outside of my, my kindergarten teacher and my mother, no one else has ever called me special. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's Mr. Shane. And I don't know if you, I don't know if you mean that as like uh, special in a good way or a bad way, but I mean, I'm the, here, in, in the best of ways. It's, uh, I mean, I, uh, me, both me and my wife, longtime friends of yours. It was great meeting you like, God knows how long ago. Um, and I mean, yeah, we meet a lot of people in the industry, but uh, I wouldn't say few, but not many become like friends or interested in becoming friends and get to know you and all that. And you've, you've been one of those people and it's been great to to catch up, what, twice a year, three times a year when we're at the Olympia or the Arnold or uh, occasionally overseas. But um, yes, yeah, yeah, so- every we, we got you guys back on the road show i mean you, you guys are easy to easy to like easy to love i mean oh, why not it just we're, know, we're we, uh, we, cheap business dinner no no steakhouse or or fine dining for us it's uh <laughs> offbeat burger joints or you usually find some <laughs> random restaurant to go and eat and we just trust I, I always like it when you we're going here and then we get there you'd be like well the review said <laughs> and then you kind of <laughs> And you're like, so I think we might like it, but let's go find out. It's even more entertaining when we're overseas and you just completely don't know what the, where we are or what we're in for, but you just continue to go off the reviews wholeheartedly trusting. Well, you remember the one time, uh, I think the most, most memorable one out of probably all of your vendor meetings that you've ever had, vendor dinners, was the one where we were in Vegas and I got a spanking from the, uh, that from was the, the, the waitress. The heart attack grill. Heart attack grill. I knew what we were in for because I uh, lived in Vegas, what, three months a year for like three Uh, years. I've been there a few times. I had seen people get spanking and they had the time Uh, where like at certain times of day, the people would get up and dance on the bar. I'd only seen that once, but um, that, so I I, I knew what you were in for and I knew the risk if I over ate or tried to. You set me up. You set me up. (laughs) Anyway. Did you cross your bird? God. <laughs> no, I didn't. I I, I I didn't eat that big, if I'm not mistaken. You went big. I did, yeah. Because we were at one point we were doing eating competitions because you know forever bulk. Yeah, I, I was off that day, and I, so I went short. But I also went short on purpose because I knew, like again, I knew the consequence, and I knew how bad it could be. So I, I think it was like the third, fourth time I've been there. Anyway, so we're here to talk about the raise energy drink, which has become. I would say one of the, there are very few key players from the sports nutrition space in the energy drink market. You probably got uh, Bang, of course, C4. Um, GNC has the uh, Beyond Raw Lit on the go. But Ray's has kind of been, I would say, the newest, biggest for, in, in entry of as of late to come on board. You guys have expanded from, was it four flavors originally? To, I think it was four or five, four. You had the, four, that's right. And now you're up at 10 number 11's coming. Um, how, how was last year for you guys? Obviously, it, it was a shitty year. It was, yeah, no one knew it was coming. No one knew what was happening. How did, uh, I guess, sales, did you kind of see the same growth or was it like, you know, just, just take it as it comes? We, uh, we saw, I, I would describe 2020 as, um, as just a year of change for us where um, we, so we have, you know, multiple brands, uh, that, that we're a part of that, that we manufacture here. Um, you know, Ray's is, Ray's is just one of them. Rep Sports is the, you know, parent company of that brand. Well, um, with the different product lines and, 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 and supplements and, and drinks and snacks, you, you have a lot of different customers. You have a lot of different channels. You have a lot of routes to market and it's very difficult to focus when you're trying to do everything right. You know, no, no company or person can do everything right all the time. It's just crazy. So when the pandemic broke out, 
a lot of our business was with the independent brick and mortar specialty stores here in the United States. The gym business was huge for us. You know, as you mentioned, sports nutrition roots with Ray's. And, uh, you know, when, when the shutdowns happened, we thought the worst, you know, it, it, yeah. because that was a part of our business. And um, what it gave us the ability to do is said, you know, we have all of this white, basically white noise that is always in the background of, oh, I got to do this channel here. I got to do this over there. And it gave us a chance to finally focus on the only thing that was really growing at that point for everyone was, which was uh, e-commerce. So for the last few years, we'd been kind of refining our, our direct consumer uh, customer acquisition with uh, just the, you know, the, 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 the way that you build a relationship with the end consumer through content. And it takes a lot of trial and error. It takes plenty of time. And um, to do it in a profitable way, it, that's always like the pipe dream is where you want to have a you know, profitable um, customer acquisition where you're building a long-term relationship with that customer. Uh, they know your products, they believe in your products, and they become uh, an evangelist for your brand. Uh, because they feel a part of it. So we, we started some different strategies through the pandemic when we could just focus on digital advertising and building that consumer relationship because everybody was home. You know, everybody yeah. was at home pretending to work and on Netflix all day long. <laughs> so, you know, it was a, it was a prime, t- prime time for us to really just match the gas and, and try some things out because we had, there was really nothing else to focus on. And you know, I, I feel very fortunate that, um, that, that the team was able to really figure out a good stride um, and, and just a route of how to, how to scale the brand. So as we started coming out of the pandemic, there were some huge changes in, um, in the market as far as distribution here in the United States and internationally with some of the major competitors. Performance energy as a whole, as you know, is just, you know, it's yes. exploding. It's exploded. It's completely exploded. It's a different animal. So that gave us the ability to then stack our wins and, and the business was changed forever. And now that the, the conventional channel is, is a huge part of our business, we've got direct to consumer really, really humming. Um, and you've know, got a great following and just being able to kind of get all the right pieces firing on all cylinders. It's, it was a, it was a great year uh, of, of change for us here. I saw the the Raise Insider program or the that was that was that a product of the the kind of direct consumer focus because I didn't I I think I only discovered that like months after it came about <laughs> I think one of you guys sent it to me and I was like these people had responded and sent feedback and I was like I don't even know this thing was fucking existed let alone people having time to get involved so was that kind of a product of that direct consumer focus or has that been something that's kind of been around and now it's just a lot of effort into it uh that's uh that's been around for a, a, a little while um for us and when because when we when we launched raise energy we knew that if it just did a me too formula and product it would just be white noise yeah. uh, even at the time we launched i think it was uh 2018 um when when the when, when we actually launched raise it still would have been white noise so um we kind of looked at the major competitors in the market and said you know the, the energy drink category or energy drink market is really a look at me uh, kind of attitude. You know, everybody is look at me, look how cool I am for drinking this product. Look how awesome I am. Look at me, look at me, look at me, look at my following, look at my squats next to the can, you know, look at my, you know, whatever it is. And we said, well, what if we spun it on its head and we said, well, look at, look at us, watch what we can do together. And so we created this whole insiders thing um, this insiders group where these are people who are, are a part of the brand um, by their own means. We don't pay any of these people to be um, insiders. And we let them, them kind of help us guide the brand with you know, trial and error. So one of the cool things that we can do here um, is manufacture um, that most of our competitors can't. So we can, we can test different flavors, like do almost you know, little micro runs and just try things and get feedback before we launch the next raise energy flavor. And, you know, as you know, we were the first crowdsource energy drink. Well, the insiders kind of went hand in hand with that to where it's, we, you know, it, it, when, we, when we did our first crowdsource flavor, um, which was uh, uh, 
which was voodoo. Voodoo was, you know, around Halloween. Everybody picked the crazy labels with the zombie hand and everything. You know, that was a huge smash hit for us. Well, we, we hadn't crowdsourced the flavor itself. So the actual taste of the flavor. So R&D at that point, um, research and development had made a few different flavor profiles and said, you know, if the, if the, if the voting goes towards coffee, it's going to taste like this. We all signed off. That's the best tasting coffee. The, um, the, if, we're, if, they're, if it's going to go to berry, it's going to be this. If it's going to be yeah, apple, it's going to be this. You did like, have like type, types of tastes, wasn't it? It was sort of like these are the potential tastes. Exactly. Yep. Yep. And then... And then whenever the crowdsourcing, the voting started, if, you know, they, uh, the citrus, I think, is what, what uh, ultimately won, we knew that we wanted to get a, a blood orange uh, kind of creamsicle flavor. And yeah. that was like, we just, we loved that taste. And then uh, the crowdsourcing began, started the label design, the names, and then that's how it was all born. So then with the insiders, that gave us an extra layer of, um, of trial and voting and just the whole crowdsourcing nature because you know the right now the name of the game in my opinion um uh, with with any kind of consumer package good is is who can speak the the closest to the consumer who can listen to their their voice um and that's what our, our retail partners are really looking for so why not have a brand that's actually consumer driven consumer written and um now the the general public and the insiders they they write the entire story. So it, it's pretty cool how that, uh, that's, that's kind of changed. I guess that was a long winded answer. No, I think it, it was, it was, it was pretty much, yeah. What I kind of expected. I just remember seeing the insider program kind of, cause you had the, uh, someone introduced it to me this past year and they'll say, yeah, you can now try unreleased flavors and you can subscribe and get this and this. And it was that unreleased thing that I was like, well, this is interesting because uh, I've seen a few companies do it, but not really in the beverage. In fact, I've not seen a company do it in the beverage space, sort of be able to do those micro batch runs and let people try it and then have their feedback. Sample, sample and samples are easy because you do the tabletops and you know, just the table samples is very easy to do. Whereas the beverage is, is not, not the same game, very different as, as you, as you said. And um, I just thought it was really cool when I heard about it, uh, just the whole concept, getting people to try things that, that hadn't been released, really doing what beverage companies do, but really only for their employees. Um, right. I mean, that's the only other time I'd seen it, but to give people outside the company the chance to kind of get their own, even not even just to help you, but that kind of inclusivity is exciting for a consumer. Like, even without supplements, uh, if I was talking about a mobile phone and someone said, hey, do you want to try uh, the beta version of our fresh new phone? I'll blow, off, blow my lid. I would have been, hell yeah, I would. So, I mean, it's, I, I, I always appreciate that kind of involvement on a company level, but you've opened it up to fans. And not only that, you take in their feedback. So it's, a, it's just a win-win situation for everyone. And I think you are in a unique position to be able to do that, being able to produce your own stuff. Yeah, and actually, sometimes, sometimes the uh, the, the crowdsourcing is, is is a little scary because <laughs> you have an idea of what you think the the product should end like and what it should be like, what it should look like, what it should be named, and when it starts going in a different direction, like Baja Lime, for example, um, that was the that was the most recent flavor until the, the, the you know the current flavor launch that we're going through right now, where I, we found that the 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 fruit names did not turn as well as the more mystery names like yeah. Galaxy Burst, Allo, Voodoo. Granted, they taste awesome, but the, the fact that it was the kind of that mystique uh, behind them was really what, what, what drew, uh, drew, drew people to the brand. Well, when it's anything that's, that's lime flavored, is it you either love lime or you hate lime? There's hate not lime. a lot of people who are in the middle. Yeah, he's, exactly. I'm, I'm, so like, I'm, the other, I'm the other way, I don't like but I like Baja Lime. <laughs> that <laughs> well, was the craziest thing. Yeah. Well, because it's not like super limey though. It's kind of like lemon lime. Because well, the sweetness of the drink itself and the carbonation takes it away from, like I've had the lychee one, uh, rain, rain did lychee. I, I've had lychee by itself. It is not a, it's not an entertaining flavor. I mean, it's by, by any standard. But then I had it in that and I was like, 
but I guess the energy drink format allows you to bridge. The only the only flavor I don't like in 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 a carbonated drink, even though like again I'm not a fan of lime or even watermelon, but those drinks taste so good. Um, is uh, cherry. I I just can't get on board with cherry. Is obviously uh, not being fully American. I, I, it, I you know I feel maybe that plays into it. But um, yeah. 3D Energy has a. I think they have a, their red ones are like a bit of a cherry. I just. Oh, I mean, I don't know. It's a, it's, but to be honest, if I don't like cherry and you have 10 flavors available, that's a pretty damn good hit rate. <laughs> and right. It still gives me it's plenty true. of options. But the, uh, I, the one thing I didn't like about the Baja was that you put, was, that was the one with the coffee on it, wasn't it? With coffee Where with coffee. Options? Yes, yes, yes. I was sitting Cut. there going, holy shit, please no. Because I knew, and I had seen people reply to my story, because you got, you ask people to get involved. And whenever you do that, people sometimes just read the caption and then reply to me and then start sending me stories. And I'm like, and I mean, I, I don't reply to all of them and say, hey, send it to, to Ray's. But I remember seeing so many people were like, oh my God, coffee. And I'm like, are you fucking serious? It sounds horrible. A coffee energy drink. <laughs> That would be, and well, I, think even, I think I messaged thanks. you and you were like, yeah, I, I'm really hoping that's not the way it goes. <laughs> I just, I'd seen some things attempted, uh, but coffee, oh, I can't imagine a carbonated coffee going down well. You Even if you nailed it, I can't imagine it tasting good. <laughs> dude, it's been, dude we, I didn't think it tasted good at all when we tried the, the sample before it launched. So that's why I told you, man, I hope it doesn't happen. It was a, uh, I don't know, just an, an interesting way that that we kind of differentiated the product line. And you know what I we also noticed is whenever you were would share something about one uh, one of the uh, the flavor launches that we would do, you would get a lot of engagement on your on your social platforms. Like I noticed versus some of the other stuff that you post, your oh, your your follow would beverages really get themselves. Uh, beverages themselves just bring a lot of attention and. The thing is, the images that I share of Rays a lot of the times are those options. So sometimes if I share a picture of, of, of those four options, even without reading the caption, even without knowing what it's got to do with, they'll just say, I like berry. Oh, I like tropical. Oh, coffee looks good. They won't, they won't, they don't care what it's about. They'll just say, even if I shared like uh, four beverages that were now available, people would still comment and just say, oh, I like the sound of that one. So it's natural that when you have a presented of all these different options, people interact quite a bit, but when it comes to energy drinks, to me, it's the, like back in the day before pre-workouts were, I guess, overly like protein powder was, was, was sort of the big one. And people would always comment and say, Oh my God, that protein sucks. Oh my God, this protein is the best. Nothing beats it for whatever reason. They would do some research, find out this is this, and they like this macro and you know, whatever, whatever they found their protein powder. Now I think energy drinks has taken on that same shape. Like you're loyal to Ray's, you think most others are shit to the point where you're probably not even going to try anybody else's. And when you have a company like yourselves pumping out new flavors like so quickly, how would you even care about any others? If you like it, you've got 10 different flavors to choose from. You've got a ton, buttload of That's caffeine. True. It's I mean, it's, and you do, you do that inclusion. So people feel involved. They don't really have time to bother looking at someone else. So it's, uh, I mean, I feel like that's uh, why energy drinks themselves get a lot of attention. Not all beverage brands. I've seen a few that don't, people don't care about, um, you know, the newer yeah. ones, smaller ones, but you came in at really one of the earlier, the, the, the first in that space before it kind of, it was exploding, but not fully. Now it's exploded. You guys got in, Pretty much when I was telling everybody to get in, I didn't tell you, you're already doing it. But when I was telling <laughs> her, I was like, dude, Bang is killing it. You need to make an energy drink. It's like, nah, nah, nah. I'm like, but look at what he's doing. And then C4 kind of came in around the time as you guys, uh, and 3D was a little bit around there too, America Energy. And now they're all just top of the game, flavor leader, just that killing it. And you're up there. And so, as you mentioned, you're now onto your third crowdsource flavor. That's currently the uh, 
the campaign. I think we've, it's going to be tropical flavored. That's what you, that's the, the consensus. Right. So I assume that the next part coming would be the look or the name or the next, uh, next is going to be the name, the name the selection. Name. So that this one we've, uh, this one is the, we have, we, this one we've been testing, um, uh, for almost, I would say the, the greater portion of a year where for the last eight months, we've been doing the insider flavors and just, just going through different variations and, and trying um, just all the different flavors. I mean, probably, I don't know, 10, maybe 12 different un, unreleased flavors to get down to this flavor where this one was just such a clear winner with the insiders where we know that it's going to be a hit. It's a hot flavor. Um, and I just, I, I, the feedback on this one has been uh, bar none the best we've ever had. So I, I'm really, really pumped about this one just because we, we've never had a chance to, to spend, you know, eight months testing yeah. it with, with, with a group before because this, you know, has really just advanced through 2020. Baja Lime, the insiders was not – it was it wasn't really in, in existence when we launched Baja Line. So to be able to do that through this whole course, like we feel that this flavor is going to um, just be be our flagship skew, uh, our, our flagship flavor, and yeah, we just just because we've tested it so much. It, yeah. If we had a bunch of people telling us, yeah, "You're an idiot. This is stupid. Don't do this. We hate this flavor. I'm throwing it in the trash. Please don't launch this." It hasn't been that at all. Now we've we've tried some flavors there was a like a blue cotton candy that we did that it was it was terrible <laughs> yeah, i just it was, blue? it was not good could you taste the blue what, what made it blue was it just cotton candy and... it was cotton candy and blue oh, so, God damn. Uh, yeah we figured figured we needed a blue can so you know let's do a blue can and uh you know blue cotton well actually uh, Chris Wagner, our, our, our president and CEO, he <laughs> loves cotton candy, but he's like the only person in the building that 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 loves cotton candy. Like we're all like myself, Lewis, our, our director of research and development. Like nobody else likes cotton candy but him, and he's always yeah. like lobbying or lobbying for cotton candy, cotton candy. And it was funny. We launched it at the ins in the insiders and they voted on it, and it was against a cherry flavor. Your favorite. Oh. And the, the and the cherry won by a landslide, and it was just so bad. So like, I guess that that just it's just further validation of like the process of how Ray's works. Is our you know the 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 head honcho over here is he's all about cotton Saying candy, it. and still. So this is the this is done. the first one that the insiders have really well the first one that the insiders have had kind of input because I know right. that Voodoo was August September, and then you did. Baja Lime only what a few months, four months later, five months later. That's so right. this one is has kind of been a long time coming. So you're right, you've had plenty of time to uh, really test it thoroughly with insiders. So I mean, I have high hopes that based on that. Tropical, I have had other drinks have done it. It's a hard one. It depends on the route you went because I mean, you can do tropical with a smaller variety, but I think it's that tropical juice sweetness that you need to nail. And if you can hit that with that carbonation of an energy drink, pretty much a carbonated fruit tropical juice is what I've 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 found is the best. But a lot of people sometimes lean towards a certain fruit, and then you just like, and then the combination is out of balance and doesn't taste sweet, and you're like, this is piss. And it's, I mean, it's yeah. that's the problem with energy drinks is people have their own perceptions. Like you said, Chris likes cotton candy. I thought you ate cotton candy. Apparently you can drink it too. It's a, I can't imagine the transitioning. I, I mean, I have had banged at a cotton, has done a cotton candy. I didn't really, I don't know. It's, it's sometimes you have to forget the original inspiration to make it success. Like if you gave me a tropical bunch of fruit, I probably wouldn't like it, but you combine <laughs> it to, to the point where like it creates this taste that you know is tropical. So I imagine you've nailed it. Phantom Freeze is still my favorite. Phantom Freeze. Um, was it the strawberry? Uh, strawberry colada. Colada, yep. That's another favorite of mine. Um, I actually like Voodoo as well, but I'm a big orange soda Fanta fan. So 
that was kind of a given. I knew that was going to happen anyway. Um, Voodoo always says such nice things about you, Shane. So it just works out. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, so, the, so the name's coming next. With you saying about the cotton candy, is there a flavor that you've liked or you've come up with or been like, dude, I need cherry cinnamon. Let's, let's do it. And everyone's just like, that's fucking horrible. What is wrong with you? Like it didn't even make it to the inside of so like, let's not ruin their lives any more than they need to be. Oh, there has been, <laughs> there has been a couple. The, so we were around, it was around, uh, around Christmas time. And, um, and we're like, man, we should do a, we should oh, do God. a seasonal Christmassy. And uh, I was, I was, I was asking uh, Lewis uh, in R&D, I was like, man, what can we do with cinnamon that doesn't suck? Oh, yeah. And they're just like, get out of here, just go away, go away. There, there's been a couple ideas, but I think the cinnamon, because, so. Cinnamon I have, can't translate to a common, it just can't. Dude, so here, here's, a, here's an excerpt. for Get some Sprite podcast. Zero and then put some cinnamon in and you don't tell me what happens. I I think think. It's a terrible idea, I thought I was being creative and it was just a, it was a bad idea so yes there has been uh plenty of those so <laughs> is is there any that the team has come up with kind of thought about and everyone's just like this is fucking amazing but we're gonna save it yes yes because you previewed a black can a while back and i feel like with each energy drink, the black, gold, silver, white themed cans, just those off colors. Cause right at the moment you've only done, not really flat color, but you've just done colors, white, pink, orange, purple. Um, Baja Lime was a bit of a pattern to it. Voodoo was, was black, but orange touches. Those, those uh, different colors, those things that step out of the box. I feel like you always have to do something special for it. Like the Black Monster Ultra was exclusive to like 7-Eleven or something, if I remember correctly. And um, 3D Energy, we've been waiting for their black can for like forever. And whenever you see it, it just pops. And everyone's like, that's, it's got to be dynamite. It has to be. Can't not be. So I feel like, is, is, are we in for that from Ray's? Is there ever going to be a flavor where like, we don't give a shit what you think. We know this is the best. We aren't going to crowdsource. This is coming out. Um, or, I don't, are, we, I, are, we, are we here for crowdsourcing for the rest of our lives with Ray's or is uh, I, I think so I just there is something that uh, has just kind of defined us as a brand and you know, we have a unique ability to do it and it's what so are I one think, of these flavors that you've got tucked away the ultimate the ultimate recipe the I don't know ginger man. and candy cane and you want to and you've got it tucked away and then you bring it to the insiders and they're like this is stupid, but the entire office is like, no, it's not. We know it's not. We did strawberry colada. We know. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, there was a gummy bear flavor that, that happened. Um, yeah. Where we, yeah, we did a, a gummy bear flavor uh, internally here. We're like, this one's going to be a hit. Everybody in the office loves it. Like it was, a, I think I was telling you about the gummy bears. Well, you, did, you did the gummy worm originally. But it's a sour gummy worm, right? So that was why... I, I think we got a lot of flack. I think you have to attach sour to the candy flavor in order to, to be able to feel candy. Because then otherwise right. it's going to feel like a fruity, fruit punch. Yeah, well, it, it, we thought that it, it was going to be a huge hit. We released it to the insiders and um, uh, it just didn't get the feedback that, um, that we needed, needed to, to really consider it. So that was one that we were like, yeah, this one could be a great hit, but it just wasn't. Because I think it was maybe just so similar to um, sour gummy worms. Yeah, I don't think it would be a tough one to, that's the argument I make when I, I've had these, uh, the Snickers and Mars, they do protein powders in the UK and now they've got them in the America. And um, that was my issue with them is that they're authentic, they're made by the candy companies themselves. Um, but if you blindfolded me and gave me a chocolate protein powder, I probably couldn't tell the difference between the Mars one and the chocolate one. So I feel like there's a lot of these things like when you have a gummy bear, if you blindfolded me and gave me a fruit punch, fruit punch versus a gummy bear, I feel like it sometimes is difficult to tell what you're hitting where the name's attached. It's obvious, but um, oh, it's so hard. I, 
Rain just did it. Rain have got their their white gummy bear, which I'm intrigued to know why the white is attached. No, I'm just curious because I've eaten gummy bears, but I couldn't tell you what color I like. I don't pick out as M and M's. I get Skittles. I get gummy bears. I've never. I'll let's separate the reds, the greens, and the the yeah. white. I honestly couldn't tell you what it tasted like, but I'm I, I'm more surprised that they attached the color to, well, not the lack thereof to figure out, yeah, I'm interested to see what it tastes like, uh, just because Gummy Bear, again, as, as you said, it's a hard one to nail, but they've gone white Gummy Bear. So I'm thinking like a lemon lime candy is my guess, but I don't know, it's a... It could be just something to get you to question what the flavor yeah, that's is. You know, it that, could just be Gummy Bear, or it could just be a yeah. fruit punch. <laughs> Yeah, it could it, maybe maybe there are no different flavors of gummy bears. Maybe they're all the I same size. Like, and I that don't know just, now. Want it, I mean, they're doing it. They're doing it to you right now, Shane. I know. Like, this is, that's what the, it tastes like. It's that's the goal. <laughs> that's right. I, I mean, they could have caught. I don't know. Yeah, I just thought the white gummy bear. I was like, of all the gummy bears, that's the one. Like, it's kind of like the the jelly beans. Like everyone knows what the black one tastes like. It's gross, right? Exactly. <laughs> everyone, everyone leaves it. But like if you ask about the white gummy bear, I was like, the red one I thought would have been like a like a strawberry or a berry. The the yellow I swear is a pineapple or a lemon. But the white, I'm like, that's nobody. That's a that's the ghost gummy bear. No one likes that. The ghost <laughs> of gummy bear past. <laughs> anyway, yeah, anyway, so yeah, I'm, in, I'm I'm interested to try this this tropical race. So uh, the the name is up next, and then obviously the can design should be fun. Um, and yeah, I, I think it's you've built a pretty incredible just system, really. Like you said, you 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 could have just you have the equipment with you to pump out the product, but you went that step further, which I think is what made Rays so popular. Is that you've made that. Uh, the system you have, the production facility you have, and you've put it to use with a tight-knit group of fans, just expanded the family. It's been awesome to watch. Um, and it's international, which uh, is even better. I've enjoyed, yeah. I remember, it was it last year? No, year, God damn it, year before. We were in the UK and it was <laughs> sampled out to the to the UK fans. I thought that was awesome to see. Um, it's it sometimes is hard to make that transition. I think uh, sometimes if you make something too likable to one country, it's not so liked about the others, but Ray's obviously has stepped past it because you were in you're in Europe in its entirety, correct? That's right. Uh, uh, Joey, our international sales manager, is, uh, has worked with, uh, worked with uh, Europe now to create a European formula uh, that's European compliant. We've got one uh, for um, uh, the Middle East, North Africa region. Uh, so it's got Arabic uh, text on the can. We've got one for country in uh, South America and he's working on a French uh, version for uh, Canada that's bilingual. So it kind of, uh, it, it's kind of cool when you're, when you're creating beverages now for other countries and the flavor changes as well too because they'd always taste different in every country because of the caffeine content and the ingredients and all that stuff. So have you have you um, yeah, into it's, it's, Asia or any parts of Asia? Not with not with uh, with with oh, race. Yeah. Do, yeah. We uh, but with rep sports, we have the you know uh, there's there's plenty of rep sports in in uh, China and Japan. Um, New uh, Nutriki that's that's been in Korea for a very long time in China. But with the raise energy, no, just because of the freight. Um, I just, we've not I just really because when I was in Japan, uh, I've been in Japan, Korea, uh, and Malaysia, and like all the countries I go to when I used to go I'd travel, I'd be like, okay, off the plane. If it's too early in the morning, I need an energy drink to push it out so I don't get to sleep. So I need to switch my system up. And Asia's always the one that I've been like, ah, shit, here we go. Because it's not, you, you don't have energy drinks. <laughs> like they're not common in Korea, um, Japan, like, you know, you go to Monster in Europe, they have sometimes three to choose from. Um, in those Asian countries, I've seen some of them. And, and the, even when you find the, the odd caffeine, I remember in Korea, it was like a short, it's not, a, it's, not, it's not the slim 12 ounce, it's like a, 
half size slim 12 ounces i get six ounces yeah, and i remember i've got in here yeah it's like the um i got one up there on the shelf it's they usually like for like coffees mini... that's what yeah. i got yeah they're usually coffees and i've seen them over there and i'm like god damn it and they're expensive because sometimes the convenience stuff over there is high price and i'd have to buy like three just to give me a kick and i'm like and you're also not even given the option of no sugar all the time so i've always been interested to see how one would transition into their market because it's not a it's obviously energy is probably carbonated energy is probably not that big there as it is in other parts of the world um but i would just love to see a big juicy american patriot uh rays in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the aisle in the cooler just next to the short stocky things like you waving that uh the freedom pop is it the the red white and blue god that would nothing more american <laughs> with that giant 16 ounce next to the, the little one i don't think you get any better than that I, no, I, I, I should take one next time i should take one next time and just put it in there and just take a picture no one will ask you know and and I just, just, just to show you, because God, it would stand out like a, like a sore thumb. I mean, it's bigger than some of those Coca-Cola bottles. It would, it would. I think, I think with, with, with drink, with energy drinks, it's like a good, it's a consumer habit, you know, like it is. there's, there's people like in Japan, for example, they've got the vending machines everywhere. It's a huge part of the culture. Oh, yeah. Those little cans come out of the vending machine sometimes hot full of coffee you know sometimes they're just little red bull uh cans that are you know just tiny to the, like i like struggled you said, to like, even you know. find the red bull in there it bugged me that i oh, was they, like they had all these vending some, some did <clears throat> you'd get like rows of vending machines but then the one-offs <clears throat> i had to guess because i was like i didn't see red bull i'm like there's got to be something in here and i hate coffee so i remember i put one in and it was like this and it turned out to be like a a grape jelly <laughs> and I was like oh, and no. I sat there like tapping it down I was like I don't know if this has got caffeine but it definitely has sugar based on the, on the structure so I was like that'll do it's just let's just get something and but it's uh it, again it's it's very clearly not like a huge market or as high in demand as just the different like you had the jelly in a goddamn vending machine so clearly there's a market for that um obviously different culture different needs different perception it was a lot of i remember when you were, we were going home we'd go home at like 10 go back to sleep at 11 when we were there and you'd see people boarding trains just as much as on the train as they were earlier in the day i was like i don't think these people sleep either that or they just switch shifts like they just keep going it was just crazy you're used to those scenes of american movies where you get off the train at like 11 o'clock at night and the chip packet rolls through no one's on the train station and there's a serial killer nearby or something but there is bustling everyone's got their headphones on just going to work lights all through the buildings i was like it maybe they're just coffee lovers i don't know but just again yeah. a big juicy can of american rays would i don't think anyone would buy it <laughs> you, yeah, you, i don't know it might be, it might be intimidating there's would, gotta be a reason would definitely I was, be I yeah yeah i think it's a habit i think they probably i just think maybe it's just everybody's different i was in malaysia and i remember asking if there was a gym nearby that wasn't just treadmills and he said to me did you want to go work out and i said yeah he said, just go for a run and i remember having the discussion and he said that they a lot of their importance was on fitness and when i was trying to understand if like they got like bodybuilding like muscles and resistance training they were more inclined to do fitness and that was their perception of in shape rather than like the the concept of bench press squat big muscles just seemed stupid the way he was like he was looking at me like why would you want to do that i'm like why wouldn't you but that was different perception so i guess i don't quite understand it but i gathered that it wasn't as they just didn't care i guess because it is a cultural thing. And I guess maybe when they see them big muscly dudes just probably think we're stupid. Why would you want to make your body bigger and eat more as a waste of money, right? And, 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 and I guess it is kind of dumb, but, but you still do it because you're like, whatever, I'm huge kind of thing. It, it's interesting. And I was always fascinated that the energy market hadn't really crept in over there. 
especially when like I saw work ethic was insane and like the way that they were still working that buildings were all lit up I was like oh man but uh, again I still I will have to get and it has to be the freedom pop because I don't think red white and blue just needs to be in there they would just <laughs> and, and you'd know they the size itself would tell you it's American, but you know, you need to have that, that contrast. It'd be beautiful. Yeah. It's just over the top. It's way too much. It's too, it's too big. And it's just, it's the, it's the, uh, the can of excess. Yeah. I think the ones I've had there were 70, 75, 80 milligrams of caffeine to kind of like a Red Bull. So I'd be pounding two, three of those. And I think that was like maybe seven, eight bucks, 10 bucks maybe for the three. I had to, I had to find other reasons. I had to find other sources. I didn't want to look like that crack addict going to the yes. convenience store with, and then coming back two hours later for, for some more. You had to go to different different convenience stores, right? And I, yeah, I was a tourist. So I stood out. I would have, they would have recognized me. <laughs> oh, it was, uh, it was great having you on for the episode. It's uh, definitely awesome to hear the, the ins and outs. Um, but yeah, definitely looking forward to the tropical launch and uh trying it of course and hopefully seeing you soon absolutely man it's time to get back on the road and get back to normal life so thanks for having me thanks for being a, a supporter of raise and, and actually pronouncing the name right for the first time ever <laughs> was calling it Raz. no you i know you've been wanting to do it this whole podcast but <laughs> i appreciate the time shane and it's been awesome man we're looking forward to a huge 2021